Hello, my name is Daniel and I'm a nutritional therapist. And in today's video, I want to talk about some of the benefits of vitamin K. Vitamin K is a fat soluble vitamin that is involved in many processes in the body like blood coagulation, bone formation, and the inhibition of calcification. Uh, vitamin K can be found as either K1, which is mainly found in leafy greens, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, and olive oil, or K2, which can be found in animal foods like chicken, butter, eggs, cheese, as well as fermented soy or natto, and it can also be produced by gut bacteria. Vitamin K functions as a cofactor for the gamma glutamyl carboxylase enzyme to activate proteins needed for blood coagulation, bone formation, and inhibition of soft tissue calcification. One of the benefits of vitamin K is supporting heart health, and it does this by lowering the risk of vascular damage by reducing the chances that calcium can build up inside vessel walls. Matrix GLA protein is a vitamin K dependent protein which requires vitamin K to activate it through gamma carboxylation. And this protein has been shown to be necessary in maintaining heart health because it inhibits vascular calcification. And when we look at this study here, we can see that higher vitamin K intake in the form of menaquinone was associated with reduced coronary heart disease and aortic calcification. The study found that greater than 32 micrograms daily of dietary K2 was sufficient to reduce the risk of aortic calcification and heart disease. And the findings were also demonstrated in this study of postmenopausal women, which showed that higher intakes of vitamin K2 was associated with lower risk of coronary calcification. Several studies have also demonstrated that vitamin K deficiency is associated with increased risk of fractures and osteoporosis. And this is due to the role vitamin K plays in maintaining bone health and ensuring that osteocalcin is able to bind with calcium ions and hydroxyapatite crystals. And also through its role in the regulation of ge genetic transcription of osteoblastic markers, the suppression of bone resorption, and the regulation of osteoclast formation. When we look at this meta-analysis of randomized controlled trials, we can see that supplementing with vitamin K1 and K2 was effective at reducing bone loss, and K2 was also effective at reducing fracture risk. Vitamin K appears to also play a role in maintaining insulin sensitivity, and this is due to its ability to convert uncarboxylated osteocalcin into carboxylated osteocalcin. Current evidence suggests that osteocalcin is involved in glucose metabolism by improving beta cell function and insulin sensitivity. And when we look at this randomized control trial here, we can see that when pre-diabetic women supplemented with K1, they demonstrated increased carboxylated osteocalcin, um, reduced uncarboxylated osteocalcin, as well as lower glucose and insulin levels following an oral glucose tolerance test, and an increase in insulin sensitivity. And this finding was consistent with this placebo-controlled trial, which found that four weeks of vitamin K2 supplementation led to increases in the insulin sensitivity index, as well as increases in carboxylated osteocalcin and reductions in uncarboxylated osteocalcin. And as you can see from the evidence presented, vitamin K is very helpful in supporting cardiovascular health, bone health, and insulin function. Well, that's it for me. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like and subscribe button, share it, and if you have any questions or would like me to cover any specific topics, drop a comment below, and I'll see you next time.